Yeah, I think we're done. Croissant Noel friends, welcome back. It has been a hectic couple of weeks here at Domos L and I. We are 100% recovered from the storm of the century, but my day job work has ramped up pretty significantly recently, both because of the general rhythm of the academic year and also because we're still scrambling to catch up on the seven days that we were closed and couldn't get things done. Today, I will be making a London hood. I know what you're thinking. Courtney, didn't you just make one of those a couple of months ago? Okay, first of all, it was nearly a year ago in May 2020. And second, how exactly was that almost a year ago? It feels like it's been like three weeks. Also, I just really love London hoods. I have three of my own and material for four more, plus another couple I've made for friends and family. This particular hood I'm making today is for my friend Nikkei's, who is putting together a 14th century kit. And since I am always here to enable any forays into the one true century, I jumped at the chance to help her with it. I really just want to jump into making this hood. We'll talk a little bit more about the finds it's based on as we go. So for right now, grab your cuppa. I I'm drinking a tea from my local tea house, The Steeping Room. This is their Madagascar Vanilla, and it's one of my go-to teas for a blustery day. Let's get into it. Obviously, the first thing we need to do is make a pattern. This one, as usual, is based on the late 14th century London finds, most recently documented in the Medieval Tailor's Assistant book. There aren't a ton of commercially available patterns for London hoods, which means that every time I draft one, it's based on the recipient's measurements. I've thought about making a downloadable PDF pattern for buttoned and plain London hoods in a couple different sizes. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you would be interested in purchasing, or if you enjoy drafting your own patterns for accessories like this. Once the pattern is drafted and cut, it's time to move on to the fabric. This is a lovely wool suiting in a dark midnight navy that will go with just about everything the case owns. I'm tracing the pattern onto one layer of fabric at a time because I drafted the pattern with no seam allowance and I want to make sure that I have all of my sewing lines chalked down so I can cut around them.
Once I finish with the wool, I'll do the exact same thing with the linen lining. Time to sew the gores in. I'll be using the same technique that I used on my first London hood video, and if you're interested in how I do it, you can check out my gore tutorial video in the card in the corner and the description below. Again, as I did with the wool, I also will do with the linen. After that, I sew the rest of the gores in on the machine along with the center back seams and lira pipe. Then the Lyra pipe gets turned right side out and both wool and lining get a good pressing before we move on to the hand sewing. Stay tuned after this commercial break. All of the seams on both wool and lining are going to be felled down. It strengthens the seams and prevents the fabric from fraying. This takes approximately forever.
After that is finished, I will do the last bit of machine sewing on the hood, attaching the wool to the lining at the front edge. After that seam is sewn right sides together, I will clip the little curve at the front, then turn the hood right side out and press that edge. Next, I will pin the hood along the bottom edge and trim up both pieces so they are even. Then I'll fold the bottom edges inward, pin them, and sew the wool to the lining with barely visible whip stitch that will finish the hem. Time to make the buttons. I could have used pre-made metal buttons, but there's something nice about round fabric buttons and they are in keeping with the fabric buttons found in that 14th century London dig. To make said buttons, I trace a circle onto a small piece of wool and then go over that circle with a fairly loose running stitch. I'll pull the thread tight, slowly gathering that circle down into a tiny little bag. I'll fold the edges to the inside of that bag and continue gathering until it's a little round ball. And then I will sew another line of running stitches along that gathered edge, allowing me to pull that bag even more tightly closed. A few stitches sewn into the top of the ball to keep it secure, and then I'll tie a knot and leave a long thread tail that I'll use to secure the button to the hood later. Once I have made a million buttons, it's time to mark out and sew the buttonholes. I'll mark the spacing about an inch apart and the length about as long as the buttons.
For the thread, I'm using a silk buttonhole twist in black, since that's closer to the wool color than the blue thread I have. And instead of using scissors or a seam ripper to cut the buttonholes, I'll use a hand-forged buttonhole cutter. Then I will sew around that cut with a buttonhole stitch, reinforcing them at the ends. There's a ton of buttonhole tutorials out there, but if anyone might be interested, I can make one here as well. Just let me know. One down, 17 to go. This kept my hands pretty darn busy during the lulls in the winter storm. Bless you. When all of the buttonholes are finished, it's time to sew on the buttons. Using the thread tail, I'll attach the buttons with a stitch or two, wrapping the thread around those stitches to form a stabilizing shank.
And there we go, yet another successful project completion. Nikkei's was very pleased with her hood, and I promise as soon as it is safe for us to take some pictures, I will get some lovely shots of her entire kit and share them on Instagram. Tune into my next video for something a little bit, a lot bit different. I know I said that I'd stay medieval, but I had this amazing idea for April Fool's Day, and I promise after that we'll be back to all medieval all the time. But you'll have to check back in to see what the surprise is. Until then, if you liked this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and perhaps consider watching another of my videos too. I upload every other Friday, and if you like reminders, ring the notification bell. If you want to find me on other social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere, even on TikTok now, which is, as a millennial, mildly terrifying. I will put all of those links in the description below, along with the link to my coffee where I post exclusive content for donors if you would like to help support the channel and treat Master Brand in a more direct way. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Will.